assessing career confidence and decision making. Um, so whether you are at a place in your career journey of just starting at Auburn, figuring out your major, figuring out what you'd like to do long term, or maybe you are getting into a groove for all things remote learning um, during such a time of unknown and uncertainty, um, or maybe some of you are about to embark on your full-time job search. So wherever you are at in that career development process, um, we want to really think through um, how you can find confidence in the careers that you are deciding, and then how are you even finding confidence in the decisions um, that you are a part of as well. So you're probably wondering, well, who am I? Um, but my name is Marissa Miller and I serve as one of the career counselors here within the Office of Career Development and Corporate Relations uh, within the Samuel Ginn College of Engineering. And so today, going to be sharing with you not only how to think through your career confidence, but also how are ways that you can engage with our office as current engineering students. And I will pass it over to Sarah. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Sarah Schwartz. I am from Student Counseling and Psychological Services, Senior Staff Clinician. Um, we're part of the Student Affairs Department. Uh, we have an office in the med clinic on the second floor and in Haley in the basement level. Um, really excited to be here with you all. Talk about decision making and you know best possible outcomes for future, stress management, all that fun stuff. Wonderful. So just to kind of give you an overview of all the great topics that we'll be touching on today and would love again to hear from you about each of these topics. Um, so we'll start out with the power of decisions. And so really helping to figure out how are each of you going to start this semester strong, but how you can replicate this process in future semesters as well. Uh, we'll be discussing the value of communication. And so thinking through what are your individual needs in relation to communicating those, um, but also what are expectations that you have set for yourself for this semester um, and also in alignment with your future career goals. Um, we'll discuss in not only setting expectations but also managing those expectations and then how you can stay connected with both myself and Sarah um, in our representative, um, within our offices and as representatives of those offices. And also what are other resources that might be available to each of you um, to have a successful semester and time at Auburn. So um, enough from us, I wanna get us started today to have a framework um, of maybe a decision that whether you've recently made it or whether you've been a part of the Auburn Engineering Program uh, for a few semesters now, but take a second, think through um, why you chose Auburn Engineering. Um, and so just think through that a little bit. Uh, feel free to share um, in the chat box if you want to start to think through maybe what, um, not only why Auburn Engineering, but what were maybe some factors and considerations um, that you took to that decision or that helped you to decide um, Auburn Engineering. So take a minute or two and then we'll get started. Right. So why Auburn Engineering? Um, would anyone like to share why they chose Auburn, why they chose engineering? What were some things that came to mind? Well, I chose Auburn just because it was close to the job. So like I'm an aerospace engineer, so Auburn's right by Huntsville. They recruit from here. So it's a good place to kind of set yourself up. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So thinking through from the job perspective, location, also industry, um, which is huge. And so that's a lot. Um, and so for you, Riley, maybe that really was 
um, helpful whether you started with looking at what programs Auburn offered or maybe you started with the Huntsville area and then started to backtrack to see what industries and the best way to get there. That's great. Would anybody else like to share? I'll, I'll go. Um, I chose Auburn Engineering because of one of the main reasons was because they had industrial and systems engineering and a lot of the schools don't and they had a well-established program for it. Yeah, fantastic. And there are a few of your classmates on here today, which is great. So yeah, so understanding what programs are being offered at the institution and then Hopefully with that, you probably found, whether it be through the engineering website, what opportunities might be available to you as a student in that program, and then also um, in connecting with our office or other resources on campus, how you can find success as an industrial and systems engineering student. Wonderful. Um, another one, heard that Auburn engineers tend to stand out among other schools, so I chose Auburn to give a boost in the competitive career world, which is, which is great. Um, Many of our programs are highly ranked uh, within the industry, within other fellow programs um, nationwide. And also, um, I can't say enough about just the plethora of opportunity that each of you get to have as a current Auburn student, but then a future Auburn engineer. And so those are things that we'll take into consideration today um, as we start to discuss not only the process that maybe each of you can came to in deciding and answering the question of why Auburn Engineering, but also how that decision has maybe impacted you and your overall experience. Um, so let me hand it on over to Sarah, but thanks each of you for sharing. Yeah, thank you all so much. That's really helpful to kind of hear where you're all at and interests and, and decision-making process. Okay, so when we make a decision, we're forming opinions and choosing actions through mental processes, and those are influenced by the biases, the reasons, emotions, you know, memories, all those things. Pretty straightforward, you know, that's all part of how we make a decision. We typically weigh the, the pros and cons, the benefits and costs of those choices, and then deal with the consequences of it, whether it's a positive consequence of like, this is great, this is what I wanted and it's working out, or the negative consequence of not the right choice, now I have to make another choice, another decision, totally fine. Um, but sometimes there's factors that also get in the way of making a decision. So, you know, sometimes we have missing information. We don't have the full story of it. Um, you know, it, there's other things, there's deadlines from professors or from other things that interfere with the ability to have the time that you need to make the right decision. Or even like, you know, we're talking about potential job market, um, you know, application deadlines and you're, they're coming up fast or something and you're like, but I haven't researched everything that I need yet and I don't know if this is the right place or not. That can all be really interfering. You can also find that it's really stressful to make decisions, especially when they influence your entire life and your future. And I don't know about you all, but sometimes I procrastinate those things because it's too stressful, it's too overwhelming, and I'm just like, well, I can do that again tomorrow. <laughs> I don't feel like dealing with that stress today, so I'm gonna put it off. Does that resonate with anybody? Any of those things about decision making? See a couple head nods. For sure. Yeah. Especially with the whole wanting to procrastinate. When it gets scary, that makes it easier to procrastinate because you're just like, oh, well, I'll save the hard decision for tomorrow. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. Another thing that I typically do when it feels really overwhelming is you do pieces of it. And you start with like the easy part of the decision making. You get that done. Mm -hmm. And then you keep doing that, but you slowly are building up to those hard factors. And the more time that you're spending, the longer it's taking the harder it is and before you know it, the, the uh, deadline is there yeah how about others feel free to chat it too if you don't want to share out loud yeah i'll do that where i like procrastinated until there's something i want to do less and then i'll do it instead <laughs> of doing the thing i don't want to do Yes, love it. That's 
big one in decision making for sure, you know. And that's that's a form of decision making right there. You're deciding the pros and cons of these two options that you have and you decide to go with this one over this one for right now. So even in that, you know, making a decision about decision making essentially. Uh, it's very like inception with all of it. So take a minute and we kind of talked a minute ago about why Auburn, why engineering. Take a minute to think about that decision or potentially another decision that you've made recently in your life. You know, maybe you want to focus on joining Auburn Engineering. Maybe it was something else. Um, just reflect on that decision and think about the thoughts you had, um, the emotions, um, the ways that you came to that decision. So just take a moment to think about what decision you want to focus on, kind of just some of the influencing factors of it, because then we're going to jump into this lovely chart. I believe this was also going to be in the chat or available to you in other formats. So I really highly encourage um, to use this and more than just today, use this in decision making in the future, um, <clears throat> kind of come through it. I think this can be really helpful. So this is just, this worksheet that we see here is just one model of the decision making process. There's others out there, but I like this one. Um, so this is what we're going with. I think it's pretty straightforward, um, easy to use, easy to follow on your own. But if you find that it's not the right one, that's totally fine. Just Google decision-making charts and others will pop up for you as well. So pretty much this takes it step-by-step step of the decision-making process. This is how you make decisions. Even if they're so quickly and, and um, just remote decisions that you don't think about all these steps, but in some way we, we do typically go through these steps. Um, <clears throat> so, like I said, at some point, you made the decision to join the engineering program. Think about this first point here. Why Auburn Engineering? What were some of the considerations that went into that decision. We've heard from a couple people already that great track record for, for jobs, students get noticed, it's close to some of the, the recruitment places that people are looking for. Think about some of those other things too. You know, what, what were some considerations that went into it? Um, you know, factors that, that you thought about. What, what went into your decision to, to kind of say yes, those things, or to weigh, you know, just those, those considerations. Not having to do a dissertation? Okay. The That's other school I had was only a PhD program. They didn't have any master's options, and so it was like, kind of realized I didn't want to do a dis dissertation, so this was kind of one of the better options. Okay. I can tell you from experience, dissertations are not fun, but you do survive them, I promise. <laughs> they do end someday. Okay. What, I didn't see who it was, but in thinking about the masters, what went into the considerations about the master's program? What did you like about that idea? Kind of where I could get a job at the end of it. Um, okay. Part of the reason I liked the master's was it was non-thesis. I have a learning disability that makes writing incredibly difficult, so it was kind of a better option to not do a huge amount of writing. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, yeah. So that was a consideration that you took is, what do I want to do? What am I feeling that academically I'm going to be able to maintain and what's going to be the most beneficial for me? Yeah. See, we have a chat. 
Auburn Engineering has a plethora of opportunities for students to separate themselves from the pack, like undergrad, research, co-ops, yeah. For sure, there's a lot of really great opportunities and just a lot of variety here, for sure. And I think even my understanding not being exclusively in the engineering program is that even within engineering, there's a lot of options and, and you know, variety of, of paths that you can take. Okay, so now that we're kind of focused on, on that decision, you've made that decision. You've decided, you've gone through this process, you're there. So this next point, what are you trying to decide for this semester? What's one thing that you wanna make a decision about for this fall? Clearly you're, you made decisions in the past, so you can do it. But what's one thing that you're like, I gotta do this and it's a hard decision or I'm anxious to make this decision, things like that. Some things might be applying for internships or work opportunities, things like that, where to apply, when to apply, see a couple head nods, <laughs> a couple of vigorous yes, I'm there. Um, maybe it's deciding if the particular um, specialization that you've chosen or not chosen yet, if that's the one you like, if that's what you love, or if there's something else that you want to do. Um, so go ahead and take a couple minutes and just kind of jot down that decision that you want to make. If anybody wants to share the decision, that's fine. If not, that's fine too. I will say from a counseling perspective, we hold ourselves accountable when we let others know what the decision or what the factor is, because other it's out there. That being said, if it's not something you want to share today, I encourage you to share it with a professor or a friend or a family member. What's a decision that you want to make? And encourage that person to hold you accountable. Check in on it. How are you doing with that decision? What, what point in the process are you at? It can really help hold you accountable to it. Deciding where to apply for jobs, especially right now. Yes. I think this year is probably one of the most stressful times to be applying for a job with the way like COVID is, is kind of panning out and things. It's, there's so many unknowns with that for sure. Deciding whether or not I should get involved in a co-op and or pursue my classes in, in a regular schedule. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough decision because I mean both have their benefits and both have their their costs with it and it's important to know what's best for you and what's going to be most beneficial for you both educationally you know career-wise but also personally and you know keeping yourself grounded and, and healthy and everything you're doing too. Mm -hmm. My goal is pretty simple. I just want to apply for as many internships as possible. Even if I don't get them, I just want to get my name out there to talk with people, to network, get my resume. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Sometimes with things like that, it's really helpful to also have a tangible number. So give yourself like, I want to apply to 15 places or 20. And then that way, because when you say as many as possible, two could be as many as possible. You know, um, so giving yourself that number can be really helpful in that as well. And then you know if you've achieved that goal too. But I think that's a really great one. And I like that, that the motivation is just to get out there, just to get my name out there and get the experience and practice. Okay, so this next step, now that you have your your decision, your, your sentence of what it is you're looking for. What, what are some options to consider in making this decision? What are some of the facts you wanna know? 
what are some of the missing pieces of information that you need to find out or can you find out? Um, what are things that you need to know in order to weigh the pros and cons? You know, <clears throat> and those might not be things you know today. Researching the facts, you might have to do that and that might take time, but you can start jotting down the ideas of what facts you need to research. Who do you need to talk to to figure out the details of this decision that you're trying to make? What programs do you need to connect to it? What offices, what, you know, what peers, things like that. What websites do you need to look up? So would like how they treat their employees or stuff like that fall under that category? For sure, for sure. That is definitely something that you wanna know about a place that you're looking into. Um, it's super important because if you're not gonna be feeling safe or feeling happy, it's gonna be terrible. You know, even if it's the right field and the right paycheck and all that, if the environment isn't right, you're, it's going to be miserable and you're not going to enjoy it. So that's a huge one to consider. That was something suggested to a group of students that we worked with this summer from an alumni is, especially in such a time of uncertainty with the pandemic, is not only, and Riley, you touched on this earlier, not only seeing what the industry trends are, but also watching and seeing how our companies either proactively or reactively adjusting to the current situation, to the current pandemic, um, that potentially could be really telling for your future with that company or organization, but also um, what you can maybe expect in your process and in your situation. And if you have opportunities to talk to current employees or current interns, things like that, I highly recommend doing that. Even if it's an email or phone call outside of the interview, you get a good sense of what you're getting into in that way as well. I mean, that's something that I went through in my internship process and my hiring process. Talk to the current people who aren't the director or you're going to be your direct supervisor. You know, somebody that's going to be in your role or has been in your role. So following that, you're going to be able to weigh the pros and cons. So maybe something to consider is moving to a new city. Is that a pro or a con for you? What's the paycheck gonna be like? Is that a pro or con? Um, you know, things like that. Those are all things that you need to weigh when making a big decision. Um, <clears throat> if we're looking at trying to decide a path in engineering, you know, what areas are you focusing on? What are you thinking about for those? What are the pros and cons of those different areas? Um, you know, for internship, what programs are you considering applying to? What are the pros and cons of those programs? You know, go through and weighing all of those different options. Um, if anybody has things kind of in mind already of pros and cons and want to talk them out, you can, but if not, we can just kind of move forward. Okay, so as you're doing that, <clears throat> the next step is gonna be looking at what option had more pros than cons. This might be weighing two internship sites, two engineering sites, or it might be just the overarching idea of applying. Either way, what has more pros? Um, also focusing on what made that have more pros. So why did this have more pros than cons? What about it? Is it because you like it? Or is it because of what it's offering? But also taking into consideration, do you like it? So if all the pros come up for something that you're like, I don't like this. I don't really wanna go there, even though it looks the perfect on paper. That right there, is reason enough that that's 
not going to work for you. And that's okay. Just because it looks good on paper doesn't mean it's the right place and the right thing. Keeping that in mind. And that can be really frustrating, for sure. But taking all that into consideration for these pros, you know. That should always be included in your pro list as well. Do you want to be there? Do you like it? Are you going to be happy there? You know. So then we move to the action steps. So you've made this choice, okay? You, you've got this decision that you're working towards. What are the next three steps that you're gonna take in order to get to this decision? So um, like, like Houston mentioned, applying to as many um, internship places as possible. So that's, that's your decision, that's your goal listing the pros and cons of the places that you're gonna apply, all those things, listing the pros and cons of applying to 10 versus 20, whatever that is, however you wanna map that out. Then looking at, okay, what are my next three steps in making this decision? That might be talking to your career counselor or your advisor about what they've heard about these places. It might be, um, you know, for scheduling purposes, like, like um, focusing on co-op versus just classes, um, getting in touch with a, with a co-op that you're interested in or things that you're interested in within that and, and figuring out time management, um, figuring out your course scheduling, things like that. So what are the next steps that you need to take in order to determine the result of this decision? Does that make sense to everybody? Does anybody have any questions about any of that? Needing further clarity? I think that was a unanimous thumbs up. <laughs> Cool, cool, I like it. Okay, so based on this action plan that you've created, now you get to determine what resources you need to connect with. So if one of your action steps is to get in touch with an advisor, figure out how to get in touch with that advisor. Do it. Um, you might find that you're doing this and getting really overwhelmed and really stressed. You have the perfect resource of calling our office, a CPS, at 334-844-5123. And we can help you with these decisions too. You know, sometimes it's like, I want to go to my advisor, but I also don't want to disappoint them if I'm choosing something that, that, that wasn't their goal or wasn't in line with what they want. Coming to our office is completely unbiased. You know, we're just here to help you make these decisions. It's somebody who is not connected with your program at all and can just be really genuine focus on you. So maybe that's what you need in this. Um, maybe you find that, you know, you need to get in touch with, you know, a certain internship site or things like that and just find out that those information um, pieces that are missing, you know, so knowing what resources you need. I think it's helpful to point out what you mentioned, Sarah, is that this document can be ever-changing. It can ever be adapted based on if the decision is altered a little bit or for some of those action items, if it feels if it feels too concrete, maybe if it could be helpful to start with maybe what are some resources that can help me in determining these action steps. And so whether that be Obviously, Sarah's office would be an incredible resource to connect with. Um, within our office in Career Development Corporate Relations, we help with the process of identifying opportunities and experiences that you would like to pursue and then processing through that together of what's the best way to apply for those internships. What's the best way to process through if a co-op is the right fit for me. Um, and so just knowing that 
this can all be really fluid and um, into our next topic in a second of how to communicate that effectively, how to communicate the needs that you have, or even to identify what you think would be helpful. And then the best way to approach that um, is something that we can happily help with, which is good. So into the into the next topic but as we transition into topics um just want to reiterate students if you have questions you can always put them in the chat box and then you can always stop sarah and i in our tracks as well we just want to make this as helpful um to you as possible absolutely so communication is really important um you know we as a society can't function without it Everybody uses communication, verbal, nonverbal. It's how you connect with others. It's how you express yourselves, get your needs met. So, you know, the way that you communicate with people informs them about who you are, too. Um, it's definitely important for job interviews, for leadership roles, um, you know, anything. How you interact lets people know who you are and what you're going to be like. In, a, in an environment. Um, you know, so making the best impression possible definitely starts, is in part starting with how you communicate. So we can move to the, yeah. Okay, so there are, we'll just go over this real briefly. If anybody ever wants more information about this, please feel free to reach out to me and I can break it down more and we can discuss more. But Real basic, there are four main types of communication styles. You see them here. Um, passive, those would be people who speak in a passive manner, obviously. They have difficulty expressing themselves. Um, they tend to give in to others. Uh, they don't express their thoughts or emotions very well. A lot of mis miscommunications happen because nobody knows what they really want or need. Um, aggressive is somebody who is like on the opposite of the spectrum from that. <clears throat> so they tend to like command the room essentially. Um, they might ask questions rudely or very bluntly and it just comes across a little, little much. Um, tend to not listen to others who are speaking, talk over people. Um, they make eye contact, which is something that passive people don't tend to do, but when an aggressive person does it, it's like they're like glaring at you. It's very intimidating. Um, they tend to be really critical of others. They point out other people's mistakes, things like that all kind of go into an aggressive communicator. Passive aggressive are people kind of in between where they kind of go back and forth where their hidden resentment towards a situation comes out in like sarcastic comments. So this might be somebody who says a mean, like something mean or derogatory about you as a person, but then follows it up with, I was just joking. Like I was just kidding. Um, another common example that I often use is this would be somebody who would leave an, like a sticky note on your mirror telling you that they're mad at you for something. Like instead of confronting you and talking to you about what's going on, they leave this note that's unclear and just like, you know, not giving you a good a good read on what's happening. Um, a lot of times their their words don't match their actions or facial expressions. And then assertive. <clears throat> so assertive is what we strive for. Assertive takes practice, though. Um, it's communicating in effective and healthy ways, um, using I statements, um, expressing your needs, while allowing others to have needs and, and being open to hearing those as well. Um, <clears throat> they, they tend to make good eye contact in conversation. It's not that glaring eye contact, it's appropriate. Um, balance in conversation between uh, like in an interview where it can flow from casual to serious and back very comfortably, taking time to get to know the interviewer as much as they are presenting their own things, things like that. Does anybody have any immediate questions about those four types? Again, if, if you wanna know more, you can reach out to me and I'll, I'll help you out. I don't know about all of you, but as Sarah was talking, I was thinking through for each of the examples, 
I can already think of a time that I used each of those communication styles. And although at times it feels obvious that we want to communicate and be assertive in that way, but it's not always the easiest. And so um, in thinking just in your different environment, how you might communicate with your peers, how you might communicate in the classroom to your family members, and then even into a really structured setting like an interview. Um, so Sarah and I, in preparing this, we thought it might be fun to kind of turn it over to each of you. And um, we've put together some sample interview responses. And I'd love to hear if you can accurately, accurately identify which um, style of communication we might have. So what we'll do, I'll read through each of them and then in the chat box, if you just want your initial guess of either passive, aggressive, passive aggressive, or assertive. Um, so first one, uh, disclaimer, these are not actual responses that I've heard before, but maybe a little tweak on some of them. So let's say in an interview, you responded or you heard someone respond as, as an intern, I knew as much as the entry level engineer, so I never was afraid to share my opinion or let him know when he was wrong. So what would be the, the guess there? Aggressive, yes. Aggressive. And I, and I feel like I had that in my tone as I was reading that and I didn't mean to give it away, but Yes, yeah, so in thinking through, as Sarah mentioned, just in that approach, um, if it felt a little bit um, pointed or it was towards someone specific um, or even just pointing out from a negative lens as well. And so there are times in our life when we're going to be negative and we're going to point out, but how mm -hmm. you can quickly refrain or re reframe this to still be supportive of your peer, to still be supportive in the workplace, but also in your position as an engineering intern, your goal, goal would ideally be to establish yourself as a professional. And so the best way to think about that is to start to practice and being more assertive and how can you give constructive criticism without outwardly making someone feel as though they did something wrong or that they did less than. So just kind of some things to consider. Um, Another one, during my group project planning meeting, um, I just wanted everyone to like each other and agree on our plan, so I tried to stay quiet. What form of communication? Riley's quick on the chat. <laughs> so, <thinking> same thing. <laughs> yeah, so, so passive. So I just, you know, peace and harmony are great things, everybody, and being communal, but also not shying away from um, from being assertive and being able to share your opinion and share your insight, that could be a really healthy balance. Um, you can help provide balance for a group, um, but also it is okay to disagree. Um, it does not, you don't have to, it, it is very natural to be fearful of confrontation, but more so a differing of opinions could be a perspective um, to consider as well. Alrighty, so last one for today and then we'll continue on, but um, my lab partner wanted to alter a step in the process to see if we could get to the end result faster. I told her, sure, if you want us to fail, go ahead. Just kidding. I was never, I never went to acting school, so I'm just trying my best here. Um, well, good, yes, yeah, so that passive, um, the passive aggressive lens of I personally use humor um, to relate to people a lot of times, but but finding a time and a place to do so. And part of that balance, but also that it's okay to joke, it's okay to have fun and, and do that. But especially in an interview setting or in a professional setting, finding a better perspective in order to really display not only your experiences, but as Sarah mentioned, communication really speaks to who you are as a person as well. Um, and so being assertive um, in that sense and, and ut utilizing assertive communication can really help in the decision-making process, can really help in, okay, so maybe you've used the worksheet, you've already thought about a decision you have to make. How can I communicate that best um, to represent who I am as a future engineer, but also so that I can equally communicate how to get there. So whether it be knowing your work style, nor knowing um, how you find success, knowing what you need in order to be successful from a resources perspective, that can all be really great practice in finding ways to communicate what your needs are, addressing and establishing those expectations and then as we're about to chat through is how to manage those expectations. Um, 
with the current situation, I understand the job search process does feel tiring, especially in times of uncertainty, not knowing if what industries are hiring, what companies are hiring, even how to go about the search process. And so if you can find that as a need um, or an expectation is to overcome that, to find the best way um, to be efficient with your job search, that can really help to manage those expectations as well. So. Um, so be thinking about ways you can insert that um, assertive communication in a lot of areas, um, but think through from the lens of what Sarah just went over with each of you is the different deciphering between differences in communication styles and equally how to apply that to that decision of what you're hoping to make this semester. So we've covered a lot. We've talked about a lot in, in relative way we moved through it. And that, that in and of itself can feel overwhelming because now you have all this new information that you're trying to figure out ways to incorporate. And Oh man, am I using assertive communication there? Or was that passive? And how do I know when I'm doing it? And now I have to, these decisions to make things like that. And it can all be really overwhelming. And a lot of times motivation just tanks when that happens. Um, completely normal and also how do we help keep you motivated because you do need to stay motivated to do these things um, especially like Marissa said being that things are so out of the ordinary right now it can be even harder to stay motivated because the normal results just aren't the same you know um, you know it's okay to feel stressed it's okay to feel overwhelmed and frustrated with the way things are and not knowing what to expect and having to adjust your expectations. It's okay to feel just out of sorts with all of that. So that being said, there are some ways to kind of help you maintain that motivation during this time. So first of all, I'm gonna say, as a therapist, but also, you know, this is super important, acknowledging your feelings. A lot of times we're not in touch with our feelings. A lot of times we think like, Oh, feelings, I don't want to go there. I don't need to do that. I need to focus. No one will ever think less of you for feeling stressed or overwhelmed and needing to acknowledge that. Um, you're making plans for your future right now. That is stressful. That should be stressful. And that's okay. And it's also okay to say that you're stressed. You know, you're in a position where that's going to be a huge part. And we're at a, a time in life and in this year where the typical is no longer typical and don't know what to expect because everybody that you've talked to and will talk to who's done job applications or done co-ops, things like that, they've never had to do it during a pandemic. So as much as they can help you, they still haven't done it the way that you're gonna have to do it. And that's stressful and that's overwhelming for sure. So, how do you manage that stress? How do you manage those frustrations? We could go to the next slide. Yeah, so how do you deal with this? Well, self-care is super important. A lot of times we think of self-care as self-indulgence. So people might think self-care is like, oh, I'm gonna go get a manicure or I'm gonna go like buy you know, a guitar or something and like that's my self-care. Doesn't have to be that. Self-care is actually taking care of yourself. Showering, eating, doing your laundry, making sure you have a clean living space. That is all included in self-care because if your surrounding is not healthy, you're not gonna be able to be healthy. Um, the goal of self-care is to help you get rejuvenated, renewed, refreshed so that you can take on those tasks. It might be hanging out with a friend, it might be going to therapy. It might be talking to a professor about this stuff. That is all included in self-care and it is crucial, crucial to do those things so that you can do the important stuff that you need and get keep your motivation going. Um, because, I mean, I'm sure each and every one of us has had a time where we've just pressed through and then the burnout is just incredible and the just not being able to or not wanting to is so intense you know and I'm sure looking back we can think of well if I had taken that break or if I had gone for that walk maybe I could have done a little bit better because I would have had a clearer head 
you know, maybe if I had gone to bed that night instead of pulling the all-nighter, I would have been functioning better for that test. Things like that are all included in self-care. It's also really important to talk to your academic advisor. They're here to help you. The career counselors are here to help you. They know what it's like to be in your program. They know what this is like. So again, as much as they've never had to do this in a pandemic, they have done the majority of this and can help you for sure. As I mentioned before, making goals tangible. Um, numbers can be really helpful for that. <clears throat> Timeline, so, you know, setting, setting deadlines on things for yourself that are achievable. So it's like, okay, I need to make this decision. Okay, it's the end of August, mid, mid September and pick, okay, September 15th, I need to have this decision made. I need to be able to move on to the next step. And then holding yourself accountable to that again by letting other people know that this is your decision. One, so that they can encourage you and help you stay motivated. And two, also to hold you accountable and keep you, keep you in check if you're not doing it because of that procrastination. Finding an outlet can look a lot like self-care, but this might be more of those fun things too. This might be the, <clears throat> um, like the de-stress or finding a friend to vent to or an outlet to vent to, going for a run or exercising to get all that pent up frustration out, finding an outlet. Uh, again, that can look a lot like self-care. It can look a little different depending on how you need to define self-care for yourself. And finally, talking to somebody in our office again. You know, stress management is like our bread and butter. We would love to help you manage stress at any time. Um, again, there, like I said before, there is no shame in needing extra support and needing somebody there who can be your, you know, your cheerleader and all this and help you figure out. Maybe you're looking at self-care and going, okay, but that's another decision I need to make and that's stressful too because now you're just adding more things I need to do. Our office can really help you kind of pick pick something and feel comfortable with that and not become overwhelmed by all those factors too. Yay, so, so much um, to chat through today. So just kind of taking some time for some recap, for some things to consider um, and what tangibly can you maybe take with you after today's session. Um, so, as Sarah just discussed, ways to really um, deal with what all is happening this semester. So knowing that our semester is really fluid, um, how we're taking care of ourselves, staying healthy um, in the process, and still being able to stay motivated in the goals that we have set for ourselves or the decisions that we need to make. Whether it be this semester, um, we try to scale that down to a semester decision, but maybe it is more of a long-term goal or decision that you're looking to make. Um, if it is career related, if it's just how to really have a strong semester, how to find success in really any area or arena of your life, that's something both of our offices can really help with. Um, and so with today, as you're thinking through, again, a decision with the decision worksheet, um, not only did we provide that for you in the chat today, um, I will happily follow up with each of you after today's session to get you a copy of that. Um, if you are visual like myself, it's really helpful to kind of take it step by step, just as Sarah walked you through today. Um, but also on the back of that and thinking through your action plan, thinking through what can be those tangible next steps to consider, um, along with some resources to maybe consider, knowing that our offices, again, are available to help out, but there are plenty of other resources available to you right now as an Auburn student. And so if you need to um, chat through what those are, finding ways to be effective in that decision that you're making, that's something that we can happily help and assist with. And so taking that worksheet, breaking it down, um, or for some of you already mentioned, you already have um, a goal in mind, whether it be the full-time job search, whether it be um, getting your feet wet and applying for internships, deciding if the co-op experience and the co-op rotation is ideal for you, um, all coupled with still being successful in the classroom this semester, whether you are owning the remote learning concepts, whether you are still figuring out what the expectations are from each of your professors, 
each of your, whether it be your academic advisor, whether it be your classmates. So it's a lot, a lot to juggle, a lot to manage, but taking it one step at a time might be the best um, solution for that. And so we just hope today this could be the first step of many to figure out not only what decisions you need to make, but how you can find confidence in not only making the decisions, but communicating those needs, communicating those expectations uh, moving forward. And that's something that both Sarah and I would love to help you with and love to support you in that process. Um, so with that, here is some information um, from Sarah's side of the house, um, just information as she mentioned in the beginning, how to get connected um, with student counseling and psychological services. Um, also Sarah's email um, that she'll be on the recap email that I send to all of you as well. Um, but also if you're wanting more information, um, Sarah, would you mind highlighting the two um, groups that you mentioned to me previously? The support sure. groups. So yeah, so we have a building social confidence group, which focuses specifically on, you know, building those social skills, building, you know, that interaction skills, things like that, feeling com comfortable and confident doing those things and can definitely be geared towards, hey, I'm feeling really nervous about this job interview or I'm feeling really nervous and uncertain about how to interact for this particular thing. And you can definitely learn some really great tips there. Um, the other support group I mentioned, if I'm remembering correctly, is the Understanding Self and Others group. Mm -hmm. um, and that one is really focused on more of that support side of things in terms of like super stressed, need an outlet, um, need other people who understand this to listen and give me some suggestions. Those are really great. We have tons of other group options, workshops, um, that offer skills in, in a variety of ways as well. Wonderful. And then to round that out with some resources that our office has. Um, so within career development and corporate relations, um, our team not only meets with students to identify what are applicable career paths and what is their individualized path to finding the right career, um, but then also helping prepare for the search, whether that mean, um, the internship or co-op search, the full-time job search, even into graduate school, if that's a consideration. Uh, we are up and running with a series of programs and events this fall prior to our um, virtual engineering career, engineering, excuse me, and technology career fair, which will be two days, um, all virtual. And so if you are needing help preparing in that vein, um, we would be happy to assist um, both myself and my colleague, Jessica, who's on the call as well. Um, we currently um, schedule appointments through Handshake, which is also the official job search platform for the university. Um, and then in addition, we have a series of programs one as early as tomorrow, um, Jessica will be facilitating a personal marketing and professional networking workshop. And so taking some of the elements from today, how to communicate effectively, how to market yourself best um, and use assertive communication in your networking interactions um, might be a really neat tool to consider and a program to get connected with tomorrow as well. Um, but again, as we round out today, I know it was a ton of information. We hope that it was helpful to just unpack a little bit and, and just know that there are a lot of decisions to be made, but we want you to find confidence in those decisions um, and confidence in how you communicate your expectations and your needs. And so with that, um, I will happily follow up with all of you um, with this information, just if you want to watch the recording, um, as well as my information and Sarah's information to have a continued conversation of how we can support you best. Um, but thank you all so, so much again for attending today's session. Um, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and fall semester.